Drag 101 with Katya, a theoretical exploration of the art and science of drag. Episode 14, Tuesday Morning Lecture. Performance, Contemporary Lip Sync Theory. <laughs> Hi, I'm Katya and welcome back to another episode of Drag 101. This week, we're gonna be focusing on the fascinating world of what to do when you get on stage. Now that you've completed the very arduous task of getting into drag, we need to figure out what you're gonna do once you're on stage. Pretty much the only thing that's off limits is being boring. If you hurt people or you're really offensive, there are consequences, but it doesn't really matter all that much if you're a drag queen. If it's a drag show, I would suggest you lip sync. You can also sing, but just try not to be annoying about it. So you're lip syncing. What are you gonna lip sync to? Think of what kind of music do you relate to? What kind of music resonates with you? I would suggest, you know, Google, what kind of music do I like? And just see what pops up. Usually there's always a couple of songs by Sheryl Crow and you can't really go wrong with her. You gotta think outside of the box when it comes to lip syncing. A lot of queens incorporate quotes from movies. They'll have a commercial in there. A lot of people will just stop the music really dramatically and bring out family members and food and just change the, the direction of the evening altogether. These are all great options because let's face it, there are a million drag queens out there and you have to figure out a way to stand out. Developing a special talent. What can you do that nobody else in your area can, because that's the key. If you can't get on television and you never get arrested, you're not gonna get famous by doing nothing. Find a special talent, nurture that talent, and then be the only one in your area that does it so that people have to fly you in from out of town to go do it. You could be the Houdini of, of uh, prescription drugs. You know, like I swallowed this whole bottle of Klonopin and I'm not gonna die. Stay away from hula hoops, because nobody cares. Even hula dancing, it's just, you know, we don't, we don't live there, you know, when we don't live there for a reason. Now, a lot of new drag performers spend weeks and weeks rehearsing in front of the mirror what they're gonna do on stage. This is the number one thing not to do. Drag is about living in the moment, okay? It's about responding authentically to the sights and sounds of my immediate vicinity. If I get wrapped up in I should put my leg here and put my arm there and do this and that. Choreography is, you know, it's for, um, you know, uh, choreographers. And uh, they, it's a outdated, arcane, it's like hieroglyphics, basically. It almost sounds like that. Leave that to them and be, be true. You know, think about it this way. I'm not gonna get on stage and lie to the audience. You know, that's not who I am. So I don't use choreography, plus, it is, it's really, really difficult and it takes a long time. The number one cardinal sin of any drag queen lip synker is of course, not knowing your lyrics. Um, you didn't write those lyrics. You know, you didn't write that song and you definitely didn't build the machine that's gonna play the song. So you have to do your part and you gotta show up on time and you gotta know your words. In drag, there are really no sins and there are no rules, which is why it's an unregulated, unsupervised, uh, middle of the road kind of low entertainment form. When I was on Drag Race, I had to learn a lip sync in about eight hours and you saw how well that went. So what I like to do now is I like to write them all out in a magic marker on cardboard and then pass out, you know, a bit of like a two lines of the song to a friend. And then all together, we just go around in a circle and we talk about our feelings. Later I go home to learn the words, but doing that kind of just like gets me in the right emotional state to accept the lyricism that I'm about to convey. So one of the exciting things about being a drag queen is you get to drink on the job. Uh, most drag queens I know are pretty heavy drinkers, um, many alcoholics, frequent drug users, generally irresponsible people. It makes it for an exciting profession. Pretty much every gig I do, I'm with a drunk drag queen. I love them. I used to drink myself a lot. I don't anymore, so I am fully in control of all my functioning. How do you get on stage drunk without humiliating or harming yourself or others. Number one, try to keep a distance if you can, especially if there's somebody in the cast or somebody breastfeeding a baby. If there's a large structure like a tree, hold on to that. Treat yourself like you're wearing 
a snowsuit made out of knives, you know? Listen, as a, as a performer, I've been puked on. You know, that's something you can't avoid, but you can't avoid puking on the audience. If you sense that something is out of your control, that a bodily fluid is gonna spray from some orifice, you have to be quick enough to incorporate it into your act so that it seems intentional. I like to give the DJ a, just a small audio clip on a thumb drive. It's, it's just me screaming into a microphone, I'm gonna puke! And then you just give him the signal, he plays it, and people, you know, it's all, they're, how did she do that? How did she do, you know? And then, that could be your special talent. Although, probably not the most sustainable thing. Yeah, there, a lot of esophageal damage probably would happen. You'd have to, you'd have to go like Monday, Wednesday puking, Thursday, Friday diarrhea. I mean, I guess you could pee, but that's so like, whatever. Your special talent could be, I live in a highly pollinated area, but my allergies are always taken care of to the max with Zycam. I use Zycam to manage my allergies. It's not, it's not recommended or even suggested. In fact, it's highly discouraged, yet it works for me because I want it to. Uh, well, that's it. I can't wait to see you on stage. I'm not gonna go, but I'm gonna ask somebody how it was and I'm sure it's gonna be great. Join us next week where we'll discuss how you can figure out if your children are discreetly masturbating under an Afghan in the living room. Drag 101 with Katya every Tuesday and Thursday on YouTube. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, honey. <laughs>